Hey, it's James here from goodguitarist.com and today I want to show you my top five easy songs that you can play with no chords. You can do these on acoustic or electric and once you've learned them, near the end of this tutorial I have some advice on how to practice these riffs along with the original recording so that you can get used to the concept of jamming even at a very early stage with guitar. If you need any help with the fundamentals of lead guitar, I have a free ebook that's completely free for all my subscribers. I'll put a link to that in the corner. Either way, let's jump right in. The first riff that I want to show you is from Smells Like Teen Spirit. <laughs> So this one's really straightforward. We're just going to use one finger for it. We put our finger on the first fret of the thickest string and we play that note. So I'm going down, up, down. The rhythm for that is one and two and three. So down on beat one, up on the and after two, and then a down on three. I want you to just take a look at it right there and try that yourself, counting out loud. One and two and three and four and one two and three and four and and once you're good with that we're going to change to the first fret of the a string so we're just moving over one string and then we go and the rhythm for that is even simpler we're just playing a downstroke on two and a downstroke on three so one two three four when you put that first half together one two three and four and one and two and three and four and one two, three, four. And then we take that, we move up to the fourth fret, back to the thickest string. We're gonna do, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go. So it's all the exact same thing, except we're playing the fourth fret of the thickest string and the next string. But the timing's the same, the picking, everything's the same. And once you're good with that, at the first fret and then at the fourth fret, you just go between the two. And that's it, you know, that's like 99% of the song. And the cool thing with this is once you're good at that, you know, following those notes with your first finger, if you just add a couple more things, you can play it just like the original recording. So this is a really good starting point and a good place to work out the rhythm, following the root notes, you know, all that other stuff before you make it more complicated with the chord shapes and the embellishments and, you know, and the muting and all that kind of stuff. Next, I want to show you how to play Seven Nation Army. And normally this would be played on a single string, but it requires you to move laterally along the fretboard pretty fast. The way that we're going to do it makes it a lot easier to play and a lot more approachable. You know, this is more about learning how to play guitar than doing the song accurately and exactly like the recording, which if you want to do that, I do have a lesson for this song as well. I'll put a link in the corner. Anyways, we're going to start by placing our first finger on the second fret of the D string. And we're going to go two, two, five, two. So I'm reaching with my pinky to the fifth fret of that same string. So we're just thinking in fret numbers. Two, two, five, two. And then we play the open D string. And then the third fret of the A string and the second fret. And I do that with my middle and my index finger. And I would practice this in two parts. First, I would go two, two, five, two. And then, oh, three on the A string, two. And once you've worked that out, we can put it together nice and slow with our metronome. One, two, three, four. Next, I want to show you how to play the famous intro to Eye of the Tiger. So 
So the song starts with like a that kind of thing. And that's a little fast to be doing at this state, you know, at this stage of the game. But we can do our own version of it where we're playing the third fret of the A string. We're going to mute the strings by we just take our palm and just slightly overlap. You can see here, I just slightly overlap the string. And then I can play that. If you overlap it too much, it completely kills the string. Not enough, and it just rings out like normal. This is called palm muting. So we palm mute the string and we just go, just down strokes. One and two and three and four. And then when we're ready, we start the riff. And for that, we're gonna stop palm muting and we go three, three, one, three. So I'm playing the third fret of the A string with my ring finger, the first fret with my index. Remember to pay attention to your arm, to how it's balancing out. Make sure your thumb's kind of halfway between the two so it supports them both equally and that it's low enough that you can reach, you know? Anyways, as far as the notes are concerned, we start off going three and then three, one, three, and then we do that three, one, three again. And then I'm going to bring my index up to the third fret. And then I'm going to roll it to the third fret of the thickest string and then play the fourth fret. So for those last three notes, when I move my index up to the third fret, I'm going to put it a little higher than usual so that I can roll it down to the thickest string. So take a moment with that, go through each of the parts, and when you're ready, we're gonna play it together slowly with the metronome. One, two, three, four. Here we go. Our fourth riff is Iron Man by Black Sabbath. And once again, this is one of those riffs that requires us to go all the way up and down the fretboard, making it a lot trickier. So to make it easier to play, I've put it into a lower position. So we're starting off on the second fret of the A string. I'm gonna use my first finger. Then we go to the D string. We're gonna play it open. And then we play the second fret two times. So just that first bit, three, four. And now we're gonna go up to the fifth fret with our middle finger. Our index finger is on the fourth fret. We're gonna leave them both there. We're gonna go five, four, five, four, and then five, four, open. So we play five, four, three times, and then open. And I'm just going down, up, down, up, down, up, down. And then we finish going O, two, two, just like we, like we did in the first half of the riff. You can see it all there. I want you to take a moment with it and then we'll try it slowly with our metronome. One, two, three, four. Finally, we're gonna do some Beatles. And this is the bass line from Come Together, adapted for guitar. This riff has a couple of embellishments in it. We're going to be sliding with our ring finger from the 5th to the 7th fret on the D string. So the D string here at the 5th fret with our ring finger. We pluck it and then we slide to the seventh fret. You know, so I want you to try that by itself before we even learn the riff. That's the first thing that, you know, you don't have to necessarily get it, but I just want you to be aware of this technique, making sure that you're keeping your thumb in a good spot. It doesn't get left behind as you slide up. 
you know, it kind of comes along for the ride. And we just, we just maintain pressure and practice that. This is a great first slide to practice because it's not too far. It's not like way up the fretboard or anything, you know, so just give it a try. And as far as the riff itself goes, we start off with the open D string two times. And then we do our slide five, seven, and then we're going to play right here. This is the sixth fret of the B string. So we're doing a bit of a string skip, you know, we're going from the D string to the B string. And you could pick both of those, or you could pick the D string and then use your middle finger to pluck that B string. Either way is totally acceptable. It's up to you what feels good for you. Um, and that's pretty much it. The, the very end, we slide down from the seventh fret of the G string and we just kind of slide into nothing, you know? Our finger just goes as far as we feel. I kind of leave the fretboard somewhere around here at the second fret. When we put this all together, it's important that you hold a couple of the notes. You know, we start off with our open D string, and then we slide from five to seven with our ring, and we leave that finger down. And then we get our middle finger on the sixth fret of the B string, because we want those both to ring out at the same time. And then we just add our pinky there for that slide. That last bit is optional. You know, you don't necessarily have to do it, but it sounds pretty cool. So I like it. Anyways, work on it just like that. You can see it all above. And when you're ready, we're going to try this together nice and slow with our metronome. One, two, three, four. So those are five songs that you can play on guitar with no chords. And at this point, I recommend practicing them with this tutorial. You can see down below the red bar, that table of contents, you know, just go through each of them. And when you're ready, you can try them with their original recordings. You know, just look them up on YouTube, slow them down using that gear icon in the corner. Or if you're on mobile, you can press the little dot, dot, dot thing. And you know, you'll find the menu for playback speed. And then you can play these slowly with the recording, you know, as far as each of these songs does have other sections in them, but I want you to play along where you can. Smells Like Teen Spirit is great because it's the same thing over and over again, aside from one little bit after each chorus. So you can play along with like 99% of the song. And for that other part, you can learn it eventually. But for now, the point is to get used to playing along with the music using what you know. You know, if you want, I'll make a tutorial for the whole thing. But anyways, it's the same deal with Seven Nation Army. You can play through like 99% of the song. There's just one other section. Um, Eye of the Tiger definitely has some other stuff in it. You know, it has a whole chord progression and it gets pretty complicated, but you can play along with the intro to it. For Iron Man, a huge chunk of it is this riff that I showed you. There are a few other riffs and a solo and, you know, all that other stuff, but you can still play along with the majority of the recording. And finally, for Come Together, the riff makes up like half the song. Anyways, those are five songs you can play without any chords, and my advice for how to practice them with the original recordings. If you need any extra help, don't forget, there's my free ebook covering all the basics of lead guitar. I'll put a link to that in the corner. If you have any questions, please ask in the comment section down below. I also have a lead guitar course coming out. It might even be done by now, so please look for the link down below. Have a fun time practicing, and I'll see you soon.